This video will raise your vibration instantly. By the end of this video, you'll be in a totally new vibration. And from this point going forward, your vibrational set point will have been raised. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you that of understanding how you can instantly change your vibration. This is something that I've been doing in my own life and I see the effects that it has. And I see how also how much more loose and fluid our life can be if we allow it to. And it has to do with this idea of understanding who we are at a greater level. Now here's the thing, we are eternal spiritual beings dreaming that we are this physical ego, that we are our five senses, we are this physical matter, when in fact we are so much more than we can even imagine. And we are high vibrational begin beings to begin with. It is who we naturally are. That of love, joy, peace, enlightenment, that is our natural state of being. The only reason. We are not feeling that unconditional love, joy, peace, and enlightenment is because we are holding ourselves down. It's almost like, think of it like a bob on the ocean, right? You got a bob on the ocean. And then imagine it's bobbing, it's bobbing, it's doing bob kind of things, you know? And then what happens is if you were to hold that bob down, it would be under the water. And once you let go of that bob, it goes right back up. Well, it is the same thing when it comes to our vibration. We are naturally high vibrational beings. And what happens is if we hold ourselves down through identity, through the stories we tell ourselves, through the different things that have happened in the past that we identify with, we keep ourselves under the surface of the ocean. We're holding ourselves down and we don't even realize it. So the key is not to pile on some new idea, it's just to let go. And then when we let go, it just naturally comes up. So to help illustrate this, I want to tell you a little bit of a story. This story of how and why you came to earth and who you are at a greater level. Now the truth is, is you are an eternal spiritual being having a temporary human experience. The thing is, we forget this. We come to earth, we forget that this is who we are. We go through something that's called the veil of forgetfulness, this veil of forgetfulness we come through, and we forget that we are eternal spiritual beings because part of the purpose of life is for us to remember who we are and that's one of the rules that we set up. We had to believe this was real. Now in the higher dimensions where you come from, you do high vibrational stuff. You got high vibrational homies. You may fist bump them. You can instantly appear where you want to go. You can instantly materialize things. There's no, you're not bound by time and space, the time and space of 3d reality. You're not bound by it. And what happens is, is, you were sitting there, you were chilling with your high vibrational friends, you were looking at earth and you're like, look, look, there's this transformation on earth happening right now. You're like, let's go and let's help out the earth. And then what they said is they said, well, you know, I don't know about this. It might be a little bit hard. We're going to have to forget who we are. And you said, that's okay. We are going to remember. We are going to remember. So what you decided as well is you're like, you know, let's learn a lot. Let's learn a lot of stuff. So you looked around. And you said, okay, you're going to play this role. You're going to play the person that uh, talks bad about me behind my back. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. And I'll do this for you. And I'll help you learn unconditional love. I'll help you learn uh, this about yourself. So you forget that you made these agreements. And then you decide, okay, we're going to go to earth. Plus you were like, you know, some things that you don't have in the higher dimensions. You may have been like, I want to watch Game of Thrones. There's no Game of Thrones up here. Maybe there's a higher vibrational Game of Thrones. Who knows? I don't even watch Game of Thrones. I just know it's relevant. <laughs> so what happens is, is you decide to come to Earth and you forget who you are because in a way, Earth is like a game. It's a game that we forgot we've decided to play. And then part of the game is for us to wake up. When we wake up, it's a huge upgrade. And then from that point, we then go through life experiences and as this 3D avatar self, which is experiencing reality through the five senses, we sometimes bump up against stuff along the way. We bump up against stuff along the way. And that's when we can become aware of our life in a powerful way because for a long time, that was me. Now the truth is, is our stories 
create our life, our stories and our identity. Depending on our story and our identity, that's what controls every aspect of our life, whether we're aware of it or not. We have a story about who we are. We have a story about our relationships. We have a story about how people relate to us. And this story was built upon reference experience of growing up. In our 3D avatar body, we were banging around. Something happened, we gave something a meaning, and then we created a pattern. We created a pattern within our energy field. And then things continue to happen, and those things kept us within a certain vibratory range. We always perceive of a vibration that is equal to that which we are putting out. So, that is how it works with our ego structure. Now, what happens is we forget who we are so that we can remember who we are. And that's what happened for me, is back in 2012, I had a very uh, powerful spiritual awakening experience. And at the time I was working at Nordstrom's in Women's Shoes. I had a job that I wasn't crazy about. I was not passionate about it at all. And at that moment, I was feeling a lot of resistance in my life. And there were certain things that made me want to learn something like meditation. Now what it was, was I had what is called ADHD. I was labeled as someone that had ADHD. I took Adderall, which is the prescription drug that they give for ADHD, and I took that every single day. Now the side effects of Adderall were you couldn't eat very much and you couldn't sleep very much. And I would take that, I would go to work, working at Nordstrom's and Women's Shoes, I would make money because I was like so focused. But then at the end of the day I would go home and it would be hard for me to eat and sleep. So what I would do for that is I'd smoke a little weed. Because when you smoke a little weed, guess what the side effects of weed are? The side effects of weed are you sleep good and you eat good. So the side effects of Adderall, you don't sleep good, you don't eat good. So I was balancing it out. That's kind of, that was my life. I was going back and forth and doing that. But then eventually I came to this, this precipice and I was like, there's got to be something else. There's got to be something without the harsh side effects, a way for me to balance this out. And I did some research and I came across meditation. It was like black and white, black and white knowledge, knowledge that meditation has only positive side effects and it will help me to release more dopamine, which is what the Adderall does. It makes you release more dopamine, which is like the more focused chemical. So I was like, okay, if I can do that with, with, AD, with uh, meditation, I might as well try it. So I remember that what I did was I went home and I started to observe my thoughts. The first day, nothing really happened. Second day, I was actually feeling more resistance because I was trying to control my mind and shortly before that I learned about the law of attraction and I was like, oh, I shouldn't be um, thinking negative thoughts and I kept thinking of negative thoughts. The third day though, something happened. Instead of trying to control my thoughts, I observed my thoughts. And in observing my thoughts, I started to detach from them. I started to see that they weren't really me. I started to get to this place to where I started to get to this place to where I realized that I didn't have to be reactive to everything in my life because prior to that, I was in complete reaction mode to everything. So what I did is I started to observe it and I started to feel completely different. I started to let go of so much baggage that I was carrying around for years, such as a painful childhood that I went through that I still identified with not being worthy. I felt like I wasn't worthy. I felt like I wasn't enough. And I always had someone in my life until that point that was very controlling and manipulative. Because from seven to 15 years old, you may know part of the story, seven to 15 years old, I had an abusive stepmom in my life. My brother and I had to deal with her. She was mentally abus uh, abusive, physically abusive. And she would, um, me and my brother were locked out of the house. A lot of times we had to work outside and if we wanted you know, water, we'd have to drink out of the hose. And we weren't allowed to watch TV. We weren't allowed to have friends. We had to earn going to school activities. Um, we weren't allowed to eat very much, so we were a lot of time to having to sneak food. We were very skinny. And that happened until about 15 years old. 15 years old came around and my dad finally divorced her. But I was a firefighter, he wasn't home very often. Um, he kind of knew of some of the stuff, but he kind of put it to the side because it was easier than having to deal with her because she was so manipulative. And what happened was, is he divorced her at 15, all of a sudden, my brother and I have all this freedom. We're allowed to have friends, we're allowed to watch TV, we're allowed to do school activities, uh, we don't have to feel guilty for everything we do, we're not locked outside all day having to do chores. We have all this freedom, it feels great. But even under that, I still felt like I wasn't worthy. I still felt like I wasn't enough. And what happened was, even though I was going through life and I never had to really see her again, I would still attract people in my life that would reflect that old way she was back to me of me not feeling worthy. So after her, this is what I realized. The other, this was back actually in, uh, in Hawaii 
when Lior and I were in Hawaii just a couple weeks ago, I was doing a film, I was filming a, recording a podcast episode and I was doing it on belief shifting and I became aware that I always had someone in my life to reflect back to me the old way that my ex stepmom was. There was always somebody there reflecting that back to me. So after my stepmom left when I was uh, 15 years old, within a year I had this girl, this ex-girlfriend that was in my life for about four years. She was almost the same type of way, negative. I mean, she wasn't physically abusive, but she was very negative, very trying to be controlling. And it was a very similar type personality. And this is what I realized. After that girlfriend, at the time I worked in BP Shoes at Nordstrom's, which is like, it's called Brass Plum Shoes. It's like the cheaper shoes at Nordstrom's. Like, um, and it was a commission paid job, so cheaper shoes, normally the more work that you're gonna do to sell the shoes. I was working there. Within a week, I realized this, within a week of breaking up with that girlfriend, I then get offered to get promoted to salon shoes, which is the high end expensive part of, uh, of Nordstrom's, which I, thought, which I thought was amazing. I'm gonna get paid way more. I go over there, the manager of that department is almost exactly like my ex stepmom. Same type of personality, same type of controlling everything. And she was in, she was there for pretty much the whole time I was there until up until almost when I left. Cause after I went through my spiritual awakening, I left very shortly after that. However, this is what happened. When I learned how to observe my thoughts and when I learned how to forgive my ex stepmom, because I realized that people always do the best they can with where they are. People will always do the best they can with where they are. Doesn't make it right that she was abusive, but it just means that she was confused and that's what she thought she had to do to survive. She had to have that control. I realized she was treated the same way by her dad when she was growing up. So she was just playing out a pattern unconsciously. Doesn't make it right, but it does make me understand it more. And from that point, I was able to forgive her. Within two weeks of forgiving her, that manager that was abusive, that was verbally abusive, and everyone tried to get her fired, but nobody could get her fired because she was protected by upper management. So for years, we tried getting her fired for things that she would say, things that she would do, legit things too. We weren't just out to get her. Like she is to be like, why is she still working here after she said this to this person or, or and uh, et cetera. What happened was, is we go to that, we tell the manager, or uh, something happened. I don't even know exactly what it was. Something happened within two weeks of me learning that meditation um, and observing my thoughts and forgiving her, she got let go. She got fired for something really small too, not even as important as all the other things that she did. And what happened was, is once I completed my past, I became at peace with it, I no longer had to repeat it. I didn't let go of everything that came with it. I let go of a victim mentality. I had a victim mentality, that was a part of my identity. Because of that, there was always someone in my life to reflect that victim mentality back to me. But the key to us raising our vibration is completing our past and closing the loop by learning from it and changing the meaning we give it. Unless we change the meaning of it, it will continue to weigh us down. So the key to this whole process is being aware of what happened in our past that we haven't completed yet. And the completion process is simply about us absorbing and feeling the emotions of what came up in the sometime in the past and letting us feel it. Now this will sound kind of paradoxical because I remember I learned that this, the completion technique, I learned this and I was like such a, I was so much in the law of attraction. I was like, well, if I think of it, I'm going to attract more of it. But once you complete it, you no longer have to repeat it. So you do it because then you complete the circuit of the past and it changes you forever because you let go of that victim mentality. You let go of the threads that are connecting that story to you. And understand as well, it's still a story. It may be a story that would appear to be true for many people. I can get many people to agree with me, and vote, this is what she did to me, this is what she did, this is what she did. But it's still a story. And it's important to separate the story from what actually happened. Because the story is what keeps us there, is what keeps it on autopilot over and over and over again. The key to this process is awareness. So 90% of you raising your vibration is simply becoming aware of unconscious patterns and choosing something new, choosing a new perspective. It has to do with you choosing a new perspective. So once I became aware of that, I then completed my past. No longer have I ever had anyone in my life that reflected that back to me because I completed it. I allowed myself to feel it. 
And I realized at that moment that my beliefs were creating my reality. And I could see how I even had a belief I had ADHD. I couldn't focus. I was like, I remember I'd walk around Barney or uh, Nordstrom's and Barney's. Uh, and this is more Nordstrom's because I, I learned how to like meditate before I went to Barney's New York. And I would walk around. I was just really loud. I would just, I would talk in accents sometimes to people. Um, I would just do things for like, I'd have a lot of fun, but I wasn't very grounded. And instead of defining myself as someone with ADHD that has like this disorder, I started to realize I just have a lot of energy. So what I did is I would go and I would meditate in grass. I would meditate every day. And I changed my story around even have ADHD, even have an ADHD. I also believed that I had to have a job that I wasn't passionate about. And for a long time, I worked at Barney's New York selling women's shoes. I've always been in women's shoes. I realized. <laughs> and I was, I was telling myself a story. I remember that uh, this is like three years ago. This is more recent. I was working at that at Barney's New York, and I knew I wanted to be full time on YouTube. And what I decided to do is I thought about it and I said, in a year from now, in a year from today, what is one thing I could do every single day that would change my life the most over the next year? And that one thing that I could think of that came to me like an intuitional thing was make a video a day. If you make a video a day in a year from now, your life will be unrecognizable. This is February, 2017. So from that point forward, I just decided every day, no matter what, I'm going to make a video a day. I made that choice and it was something I knew I was passionate about and passion is a very important part of it because that passion is the high frequency, high frequency energy that is showing you this is who you are, follow this passion. So I was moving forward in that direction, making a video a day and as I started to make a video a day, it changed my identity. I started to see myself as somebody that's doing what I love even though I was working 40 hours a week at a job I didn't like. I get done at that job, I go home, make a video and then eventually make it to, um, to bed and then wake up the next morning, do it over and over and over again. Within a couple months, videos started to go viral. My channel went from 3,500 followers to over 100,000 followers within four or five months. And then in August, 2017, I was able to go in, put in my two weeks. It was the best feeling ever. And my last day was the Conor McGregor Mayweather fight specifically because I knew it would be busy and I wanted uh, to be done with it. So I go home and watch the fight. And that was like my celebration. And this, everything I'm sharing you right now was a transformation of identity. It's an identity transformation. Understand you are not the result of your past. You are who you choose to be in the present moment. And at any point in time, you can change your story. You can change your story around relationships, always attracting a certain type of person. You can change your story around your health. You can change your story around how you attract money into your life, whether you have to do something you're not passionate about. And if you change your story, your life will begin to change. I used to believe that someone was going to put me on. I remember going into work every day thinking, well, I know I want to be a public speaker one day. And someone's going to come in here like Tony Robbins or uh, Jack Canfield is going to come here and go, Aaron Doughty, I see you. Come here and let me, you can travel with me and I will share you with the masses and everyone We'll be able to see you speak and do what you do. And I thought in my mind, that was what was going to happen. That was a story I was telling myself one day, one day that'll happen, but it wasn't a very empowering story. So the moment that I decided to do a video a day was I changed my story. The thing is, is every single person watching right now has the ability to change their story. You can change your story and choose the empowering story where you go in the direction that you want. And by doing so, you will be raising your vibration. Think of it as there is victim and there is empowered. Just think of these two avatars, the victim 3D self or the empowered 5D self, 5D, fifth dimension. Sounds pretty esoteric. It's you being connected to your higher self and taking action from that place. And the key is to first off, complete the past of 3D to then move into 5D. So when I mentioned that our stories create our life right now, you are watching this video. There's a certain story that you're telling yourself. What you can do right now is you can tell yourself a new story that because you watched this video, you became aware of the stories you're telling yourself. And from this point going forward, your life is forever changed. When I look back at my life at meditation, there was this third day I sat down. I said, this is going to change my life forever. I just knew it. And it did.
The day I was walking around at my house, which by the way, I was living at my dad's house. It was embarrassing at the time, but I was living there and I never would say that in the videos when you see the, the pool behind me and stuff. That was my dad's house because I moved in with him because I wanted to go full time on YouTube and I wanted to um, have the freedom to be able to do that. So I was walking around that and just realized if I make a video a day, I just knew it. It was a choice that I made. Make the choice right now from this point going forward, your life is forever changed because you are gonna change the story you tell yourself and you are gonna tell yourself a new story. The old story will still prop up, but observe it. It's just an old story. You don't have to continue to live under that hypnosis any longer. It's just a very comfortable story. It's a very familiar story, but you can let it go. Tell yourself a new story. What is that story that you tell yourself? What is it? Imagine the best possible version of you. What would you be doing? How would you be thinking? What would you be feeling? And as you see that version of you, simply decide and give yourself permission for this to be you now. A lot of times we have this mentality in our head, think, do, be. Think, do, be. We think that, or it's have, do, be. We think that first we must have, to be an artist, we must have the paint. We must, we must have an art gallery studio. We must paint every single day. We must get paid for it. We have all these rules of what it takes. And then we can finally be an artist. Instead, you could just be an artist. Have the identity from this onset because by having the identity, your reality begins to reflect it. I was a full-time YouTuber before I was a full-time YouTuber. I treated my side hustle like my full time because I made that choice. So the most powerful thing that I can share with you today is to change your story and to choose that from this point going forward, your life is forever changed because you're going to complete the old patterns of the past and you're going to be who you prefer to be. So below me right now, you will see the completing the past meditation is the most powerful meditation I've ever created. Listen to it for 21 days. I think it will change your life if you do so and read the comments just to see what is possible. When you complete the past, you no longer have to repeat it. And then also that meditation will help you to feel unconditional love inside of your heart, inside of your body and to let go of old patterns. And 21 days, I think it'll absolutely change your life. Also, I'll be doing more live communities on Instagram. So if you would like to follow me on Instagram, you can do so right here. You can ask me questions. Plus I post twice a day there as well. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little notification gear so you can see the daily vids that I do. And other than that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.